Hello, and welcome to Hidden Treasures, Archives, Libraries, and Courthouses. My name is Bethany, and I'm a librarian here at Haggard Library. Nathan is with us as well. He works at Davis Library, and he'll be keeping an eye on the chat in case anyone has questions. I'll try and answer them as we go. And if there's anything that I can't answer immediately, you can email me at genealogy at plano.gov and I'll do some further research. Also, just like to remind you that uh, you will receive an email later this week with a link to the handout for the resources that we are going to cover today. So have you hit a brick wall with your genealogy research? Not sure where to begin or what's out there for you to look through? In today's presentation, we will review the types of resources and information that you can find in archives, historical collections, courthouses, and museums and libraries. And while I go through the presentation, I'd like you to think about your family and keep these questions in mind. Where did they live? What did they do for a living? What clubs or societies were they involved with? What schools did they attend? The answers to these questions will give you some clues about where to look for information. So what can you find in museums, archives, and historical collections? You can find original documents, books, marriage certificates, birth certificates, death certificates, land deeds, wills, probate, discharge records, naturalization records, oaths of allegiance, court records, maps and plats, newspapers, microfilm, family histories, city directories. You can make connections with people. You can have staff and volunteers do lookups and searches for you. You can meet up with librarians and researchers so experts that might be able to point you in the right direction, societies and other groups, and special collections for a certain area. So there is a lot you can find. We're gonna to start today by talking about the Smithsonian Museum, the world's largest museum, education, and research complex. It has vast digital resources and online learning opportunities. Just a second and I will get their website up here. And once you're at the Smithsonian um, website, they have a great area for research resources that you can go through. It talks about the archives um, and the library, it has research news. And um, another thing that it has is a blog and you can subscribe to it. It's called Unbound and it's going to give you the most uh, recent information, um, updates on additions to the collection. Um, generally speaking, up to the minute news about what's going on at the Smithsonian. So definitely check that out. And lastly, they have archival resources at the Smithsonian. So again, this is gonna be um, information for you about all the different materials that they have and how you can um, access those materials and how you can contact the people at the Smithsonian if you have questions. Um, you can browse their digitized materials online. It's through something called SOVA, the Smithsonian Online Virtual Archives. And they have an archive sampler where you can find postcards, letters, photographs, diaries, advertisements, film, video, sound recordings, and much more. So it's pretty cool. And you don't even have to travel to Washington DC. You can access all of this from home on your computer. The next archive we're gonna talk about is the New York State Archive. Um, this is uh, this archive was established in 1971 
to preserve and make available to the public the history of the state of New York. And it's one of the most comprehensive archives in the country with links to research guides, digital collections, and more. So as you can see, they have links for researcher services. You can search for records. You can read about their record, their collections. You can view their digital collections, see featured topics. And this is really important. You can find out how to visit the archive. And I would highly recommend um, any place that you're going to go visit in search of genealogical information about your family, definitely try and um, look for that institution online before you go. Most places, if they have a website, they're going to um, give you some information, good information on what to expect when you, um, when you come, how to get there, they'll have their address, their ha they'll have their hours of operation and closures. Um, it, it will tell you what to bring, what to do when you get there, um, contact information, um, and more. So lots of good information, definitely make sure to check that out before you go. And I just wanted to show you this um, really interesting <laughs> digital collections that they have for the archive, if it will load. It's thinking about it. Well, in case it doesn't open, um, you can, here it comes. They've added some objects to this collection since we created this presentation. So they're up to over 60,000 objects that you can view online. Um, interesting things, all different kinds pertaining to uh, New York State history. Uh, so this archive would be especially helpful to anyone whose family immigrated to the United States uh, somewhere along the East Coast. Um, lots of information here. And again, you don't even have to leave your living room. So now we're gonna come a little bit closer to home. Um, this is the Johnny J. Myers Transportation Research Center and it's part at the Interurban Rail, Railway Museum in Plano. It has an online collection that you can browse right here. And it has documents that you can download, um, which include finding aids for the items in their collection. So you can take a look at the digitized objects online. Um, they have some really great sections where they have photos of Plano um, back in the day and then photos of Plano now. So then and now photos, those are all, always a lot of fun to look at. Um, if you are a fan of trains, um, they've got electric railway maps. Of course, they're gonna have lots of information about the interurban railway, um, including tickets, schedules, time cards, and lots of information about um, people who were involved in the creation of the museum. So. Uh, well worth your time to take a look. And if you are from Collin County or Plano, you may even run across um, names uh, or places that you are familiar with. Some other local museums in the North Texas area that might be of value to you or of interest. Um, one is the Dallas Holocaust and Human Rights Museum. It's in downtown Dallas. It has a library and an archive. Um, that contains more than 17,000 artifacts, photographs, papers, oral histories, and publications related to um, the Holocaust and the people uh, that were affected by the Holocaust. So um, that may be a place for you to do research or just learn more uh, about that, that time period. Um, we also have the Plano African American Museum online. And this website, um, has a lot of information about Plano. So if you are from Plano, definitely want to take a look at it. Um, specifically, it's going to um, have the African-American experience. Uh, you'll be able to learn about the founding families, uh, African-American founding families of Plano, uh, read about historical, modern, and contemporary contributions by um, local African-American women, other trailblazers, um, lots of really interesting photos, um, oral histories. So uh, a really great local um, collection that you can access from home. 
some special collections in this area in North Texas, um, the Women's Collection. This is housed at the Texas Women's University and it has um, lots of really interesting collections. Some notable ones are the university archives. So you may have a family member who went to TWU um, and you might find information about them if you visit the website. Um, the Women's Collection is also the archive for the Women Air Force Service pilots. So those are very, that's a very special archive. Um, you can view, browse their digital collection and see a lot of original photographs of the women who were in that, uh, who were pilots. Uh, and you can also find out about information or collection materials that haven't been digitized yet that you could make a day trip up to TWU and see in person. Um, they also have a vast culinary history and cookbook collection, some of which has been digitized and available online. And they also have um, women's civic organizations in, the, in their collections, um, including collections for Delta Kappa Gamma Society, the American Association for University Women, um, the American Texas Federation of Women's Clubs, uh, Texas Federation of Colored Women's Clubs and the Texas Business and Professional Women. And as I'm scrolling, you can see uh, even more um, collections that they have and the digitized items that you can see um, when you visit online. And as I mentioned again, if you have a family member who might have gone, definitely um, get in here in the search and start searching on their name. And let's get back to the PowerPoint. Um, also wanna talk about the special collections and archives at the University of Texas, um, Dallas, which is located in the Eugene McDermott Library in Richardson, Texas. And since the 1980s, the special collections has grown and it includes the history of aviation archives, um, it also includes um, a, num a number of other really interesting collections. You can search the digital archives online. You can find out information about how to visit. Um, as I said, and I'll keep saying, um, definitely take, it, take some time before you visit, um, go online, see what they have, um, and then you can better form your in-person visit. But as you can see here, some fabulous, um, colored plates, botanical plates. So lots of interesting things at the special collections at Eugene McDermott Library at UTD. And um, of course we have the University of North Texas Library. They have a special collection. They have a fantastic um, website. Uh, you can, um, learn about their specific special collections. You can also um, learn about how to go about visiting them, uh, locating materials in the collection, how to use their catalog and finding aids, um, get a glimpse of their rare and unique materials before you visit, um, learn about how you can use the materials and um, other interesting things that you can do uh, when you visit. And lastly, I wanted to talk about the portal to Texas history. So this is a really amazing gateway to rare historical and primary source materials from or about Texas. And the portal uh, was created and is maintained by the University of North Texas Libraries. And it leverages the power of hundreds of content partners across the state uh, to provide a vibrant and growing collection of resources. So you can find um, newspapers in here. You can find oral histories. They've got uh, a whole collection from WFAA. So you can find um, recordings from the, the news from the you know, 1970s, um, photographs, um, letters, diaries, everything pertaining to Texas. So again, um, if you are from Texas, if your family is from Texas, this is a great place to come and just, you know, type your family's name in and see what it pulls up or type in the, the name of the town or city that your family is from and see what turns up. Lots of interesting stuff to do there. 
So um, lastly, I wanted to talk a little bit about genealogical societies. So if you need help and direction in your genealogical research, consider joining a genealogical society where you can meet other like-minded people uh, at a national or local level. So the first one I'm gonna mention is called American Ancestors. This is New England's largest genealogical society and it's a national center for family history, heritage and culture. And um, they've got events, you can search their site, they've got free webinars so you can learn the tips and tricks of doing genealogical resource. Um, lots going on here. So again, especially if your family is from the East Coast or entered the US on the East Coast, this would be uh, well worth checking out. The next one, the next two genealogical societies are ones that are closer to home. Um, this is the Genealogy Friends of Plano Libraries and uh, that's located um, right around here. They publish a newsletter for members. So if you um, sign up and, and pay the dues, you can have access to that newsletter. And they conduct seminars throughout the year, including um, Saturdays that are free and held here at Haggard Library. They occur the third Saturday of each month. And usually they're in the genealogy program room. Um, they may be in the, the larger program room here at Haggard, um, but uh, put it on your calendar and make sure to come in. Um, you can hear from noted experts uh, about how to conduct genealogical research. So the next one is on October 21st and it's gonna feature Barbara Coakley where she talks about probate records. And let's see, lastly, we have the Collin County Genealogical Society, which was founded in 1970. And it's here to help you in all of your genealogical research, um, help you learn how to cite sources, uh, learn how to judge um, and the reliability of the evidence that you find, give you um, new techniques for getting through those brick walls. They host many workshops and seminars, and um, they also support the uh, Genealogy Center here at the Plano Public Library through uh, donations of books and um, resources. So we're very thankful for them. And um, you can visit their website to find out what's happening, what's the next event coming up. All right, that brings us to courthouses. So why would you use a courthouse for your genealogical research? What would you find there? Well, again, original documents. You might find marriage certificates, birth certificates, and death certificates. You might find land deeds, wills and probate, discharge records, again, nat naturalizations and oaths of allegiance, court records, maps, and plats. So some of the things that you might find at a museum or um, historical society, you most definitely will find in a courthouse. And sometimes this is how you need to get through that brick wall. You have to actually visit the courthouse um, for the town or city where your family is from to delve back further into history. Um, the great thing is that now with the internet, um, a lot of these records are being digitized and made accessible to people um, from the web. So this is Collin County's um, website. This is their genealogy corner, and you can find information about Collin County and about um, the founding members of Collin County. So some history there. And you can also search for your family's um, marriage certificate online. You can also find out how much it would cost if you find them to get a physical copy printed. So um, this is a really great resource if you are from Collin County to kind of be able to find that evidence of your, your family. You can also find naturalizations and oaths of allegiance. And um, for this, I chose the Lancaster County, Pennsylvania um, courthouse website. They had so much um, available 
Um, did they have an index of naturalization um, petitions? So uh, if you know that your family member lived in Pennsylvania in that county, you can, um, and was immigrating here, you can go in and search for their name in this um, index and get the petition number where you could do further research on getting their information. So that's pretty cool. Um, they also have, among other things, I thought it was so interesting, they had a, an index of dental diplomas. <laughs> um, they also had oaths of allegiance. So when people were immigrating from other countries, um, they had to fill out an oath of allegiance. Um, this particular index is for the years of 1777 to 1789. And let's see, I think they have, that is, that's what they have. They also have orphans index, um, other kinds of indexes where you could search for your family member and see if they are listed to help give you, um, to verify information you have or potentially give you information that you could use to search elsewhere to verify your family. Maps and plats. So you can find maps and plat maps in county courthouses. And the plat map, also known as a plat, shows you how a tract of land is divided into lots in your county. It's drawn to scale and records the land's size, boundary locations, nearby streets, the flood zones, and easements and rights of way. So this can be really useful if you are trying to determine if your family is from a certain part of the country. If you know what state and county they're from, you can go online and see if their courthouse has any of those materials digitized so that you don't have to travel all the way to Kansas or Ohio, um, Franklin County to look, you hopefully can just look online. And for our, our example, I chose Bear County Courthouse. Um, they had a really comprehensive um, list of maps and plots going back all the way to the 1980s. And um, it's actually a very, I know it's loading slowly right now, but it's a very easy to use interface. And let's see, it's loading very slowly right now. So we'll probably have to skip it. But um, let me go back to the PowerPoint so you can see, I did find this map um, from 1847 um, and it was for W.I. Smith. And this shows um, the portion of the map that pertained to this person. So if this was your family member, this would be really great information for you to have. And again, you don't have to travel all the way to, to San Antonio. You can do it from home. So things to think about um, as far as like what you can find in courthouses uh, and that can help you confirm uh, your family's uh, whereabouts, where they came from and their connections. Um, uh, really great resources. All right, so now we are going to talk about libraries. Why would you use a library for genealogical resources? Well, again, we have books. They may not check out, but we have them. Uh, we have the internet, so you can do online research from the library. We have um, databases that pertain to uh, genealogical research, classes and webinars. Um, many of the, here at Plano, the Genealogy Center, we have tons and tons of webinars that we've recorded that you can view at your leisure on YouTube. Um, physical maps, um, microfilm. Um, again, you can have help looking up information or free searches with our staff. Um, we can tell you all about interlibrary loan, um, again, access to newspapers, information about uh, genealogical societies, connections to make uh, with the librarians or with like-minded um, individuals who are looking into genealogy, and um, information about archives and special collections in the area, family histories for the area, city directories and phone books. Those can be real treasure troves of information um, for you know, what your family was doing in a certain town or city at a certain time. Um, again, books. <laughs> so uh, I will lead you through a little bit about what we offer here at the Genealogy Center at the Plano Public Library. Um, we have a great website 
And um, you don't need a library card to use um, the website or view our recorded webinars. Um, there are some gene genealogy resources that you may need to use your library card with, or you may need to be at one of our five locations to access. Um, and you can tell what those ones are because they have this little symbol that says available in the library only. So um, that's going to be Ancestry Library Edition, Family Search. Um, I think that's probably the only ones. So everything else, um, the Dallas Metro News Collection, which is going to be newspapers from um, Dallas Morning News going all the way back to 1885, Fold 3, um, which is going to be military records, um, Heritage Quest, which is similar to Ancestry. Um, again, it's going to have city directories, um, census maps, um, census rolls, uh, this, those kinds of things. If it doesn't have the available and library only icon, that means that you can access them from home with your library card. And even if you don't have a Plano, Plano library card, if you're joining us from um, some other state even, uh, I just recommend that you check out your local library and see what kind of information and resources that they have for genealogy, genealogical re re research. And more specifically, look at the libraries for the towns and cities that your family is from. Um, in many smaller towns, the library um, does is the genealogy center. So um, they may be a combined resource and you can find out before you have to leave and visit all the things that they may have on offer. So lots of really good stuff. And if you live in uh, this area, um, please do consider visiting the McKinney Public Library they, um, and the Denton Public Library. They have probably similar uh, online resources to us. Um, but again, sometimes you do need a library card to access them. So um, McKinney Library actually offers a free library card to any Collin County resident. It's an online application. As soon as you complete it, you are given your library card number and you can access their online databases and digital content. So um, that's really an amazing resource right there. Um, these holdings will tell you about the physical uh, collections that they have and, and they have indexes um, speaking to their collections. Um, some online resources in addition to Ancestry Library Edition and Heritage Quest, which we also have here at Plano. They also have newspapers.com world collection. So um, these are gonna be, enable you to search historical newspapers from the 1700s through the 2000s. And this might include obituaries. So definitely uh, if you live in Collin County, get that library card and check it out. And Denton Public Library, we'll wait for it to load. Um, again, also has those kinds of digital resources, but I wanted to um, draw your attention to their legacy lab. This is a really um, great thing. It's offered to community members. You can um, come here and digitize your family originals. So you can digitize VHS tapes. Um, you can digitize your um, photographs, negatives, 35 millimeter slides. If your family took lots of Super 8 film um, and you are afraid that it's gonna degrade in your garage, this is a great place to come and um, get that digitized and have a digital copy made. It even They even have conversion um, technology for audio cassettes and three and a half inch floppy disks. So come here and read about their stipulations for, for using it um, and um, definitely make that uh, something that you check out in person. And the Dallas Public Library, um, this is a huge library system. The, they have a genealogy and history collection um, that occupies the entire eighth floor of the downtown central library in Dallas. Um, they can help you get started on your family history. Um, you can plan your visit um, here. You can search the collection, access genealogy databases if you have a library card with them. Um, you can sign up for their newsletter. 
where you can um, learn more. And they also have um, information for the Dallas Genealogical Society. And also the Central Library in Dallas is host to the Dallas History and Archives. So if your family is from the Dallas area, you might jump in here, find out if there's maps of the neighborhoods they lived in, if potentially there's photographs of them, um, if there's any mention of them in the Dallas City Archives, or you might just be interested in learning more about Dallas's rich history. So this would be a great online destination. And the Dallas um, History and Archives is on the seventh floor of the Central Library. So next we have the Texas State Library and Archives. Um, this is in Austin, Texas. And in addition, this was um, founded in 1909. Um, and aside from supporting Texas libraries and promoting reading and learning, um, Texas State Libraries and Ar Archives um, also supports the historical preserves preservation needs of Texas and its people. So if your family is not from Texas, I highly recommend that you look to see if the state they're from has a similar um, institution. Um, I would think mo most states have something similar. And you can find lots of really great information about how to conduct genealogical research. Um, you can look at their um, the Digital Archive for Texas, and they have some very specific genealogy resources that are all um, links on the website to uh, help you further your research. Okay, so a couple other examples of library collections. Um, the ACPL Genealogy Center in Fort Wayne, Indiana is a unique and valuable resource for the Northeastern Indiana community, but it's really um, great for the entire genealogical community at large. They have one of the largest research collections available incorporating records from around the world. And it does include two very specific collections of free databases for people who may be researching their African-American um, family history or their Native American family history. So if you come here, um, you can find um, free databases that you can access. So it's a huge bibliography um, all in one place so that you don't have to spend hours Googling it yourself. It's all right here. Um, a similar uh, place is the Library of Virginia. Again, it's, it's um, large holdings, um, lots of information uh, for people, um, not just for folks who have family in that area, but just in general about conducting geneolo genealogical research. And um, so definitely take a look at that. One of the things that they have, whoops, is the Virginia Memory. This is their digital collections online. And they also have a library blog that you can sign up for. And I highly recommend that you um, follow these places on social media because they're gonna be posting every day. They're gonna have lots of um, up to the minute information, um, new additions to the collection. If they have speakers coming, you'll be the first to know. All right, we, we left the biggest and the best for last, the Library of Congress. Um, take some time to browse the digital collections of the Library of Congress. Um, you'll be able to uh, view maps and photographs, read letters, diaries and newspapers, hear personal accounts of events, listen to sound recordings and watch historic films. Um, this is an amazing website. You don't have to travel to Washington DC. It is a fantastic building, but you can do a lot of research from home right here. Uh, the Library of Congress also has a dedicated local history and genealogy reference services webpage where they have lots of other um, pointers for information. Um, you can ask a librarian if you have a genealogy brick wall question, you can find out how to visit um, and you can view their digital collections, which is where we just came from.
And one other thing that I really appreciate about the Library of Congress is their research guides. And they have one that's specific to local history and genealogy reference. So you can come here, you can learn how to use the Library of Congress's online catalog to do research on your family. Um, you can learn from experts who post articles uh, on, on their website. Uh, it's just a really great uh, place to come and get information. So that brings us to the end of this presentation. Hopefully you learned at least one new thing um, that will help you, help guide you in your genealogical research. Uh, we do have some upcoming genealogy programs, including the genealogy lock-in, which is happening at Haggard Library on Friday, October 20th. It's going to be from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, you can attend in person in the genealogy program room, or you can attend virtually. And to register, you just uh, go to genealogy at plano.gov. Uh, we also have Tracing Your House History. Uh, this is going to be a virtual program. In fact, unless indicated, these are all virtual. That's on Tuesday, October 24th at 7 p.m. You can discover resources that we have here in the library to um, finding and discovering your house's history. So that's really interesting. Um, we have a two part series on family book where you can learn tips and tricks for creating the manuscript to your family history book. Um, part one, it, you will um, learn tips and tricks. Part two, you'll learn the pros and cons of different printing methods from simple printing at home to self publishing. So those are gonna be on um, no, Tuesday, November 7th at 7 p.m. and Thursday, November 16th at 7 p.m. And those are virtual. So you can register for them um, through our online calendar. Research help, that's gonna be Saturday, December 9th here at Haggard Library, it's at 10.30 a.m. If you have hit a brick wall, come and um, bring your questions and the genealogy friends will be here to help you. And Family Lore and Legends is on Wednesday, December 13th at 2 p.m. It's at Haggard Library. Um, you can learn the questions to ask your family in order to discover the lore and legends of your family's history. So uh, I invite you to listen and subscribe to the Plano Library Speaks podcast. Um, you can learn lots about what's going on at the library, including um, genealogy services and programs, and um, it comes straight into your ear. So sign up for that. Lastly, if you have any questions, please email me at genealogy at plano.gov. Um, if I don't get back to you, someone on our genealogy team will. Um, and again, just check out the genealogical societies in your area. Um, or from where your family is from and join them for support and learning. And don't forget social media. Uh, there's lots of um, crowdsourcing of information on Facebook, on Instagram. You can follow Traces of Texas or Plano History and Heritage on Facebook and learn lots about this area. If you have a question, you can post and there's lots of people who will get on there and help you find the answer. And lastly, Remember to start small and get bigger. Um, start with your hometown and then enlarge from there. Look at the resources that your city has, at the um, resources that your county has, um, and that what your state has to offer. So thanks so much for joining us today.